In this episode, we're heading north to Northeastern University in Boston to connect with Assistant Professor Eileen McGivney. She specializes in design-based research on how people learn through immersive technologies like virtual reality. Her research pulls from disciplines like learning sciences, educational psychology, and media studies to explore both the potential and challenges of using VR to create learning experiences in environments that traditional classrooms can't offer. Of course, our interest is around public engagement. She first takes us on a tour of the facility. So here we are in KMD's Immersive Media Lab. Um, so just give you a quick tour of the space. So this is the wonderful Zach who manages this lab for all of us. <laughs> um, and this is the testing room where uh, students and faculty can book stations to try out different VR. So there's space to use standalone headsets, but there's also a headset at each workstation um, attached to the PC. So this is where if you need to do something high powered with a PC, um, you can come try it out here. Looks like lots of new fun equipment that they got in here. Um, and they also even have a haptic rig. I've never tried this, but this is where you can actually get experience kind of with full body um, virtual reality too. So you can kind of strap in and run on a treadmill. What, what are, what's the grids? What are those? So that is so you can block out your space when you're using VR. Mm -hmm. um, you set a guardian boundary around it so that you can walk around, but it gives you a warning when you're leaving your space. So this way they've mapped it out so that each PC has its own station, but then if you're using standalone headsets like the one we'll use, you can actually put more people in here with those headsets and they're not gonna run into each other. So one person per grid. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you could, if you wanted, you know, you could make the whole thing one grid um, so that somebody could move around a lot. Um, but usually you, you really need like a six or seven foot square. Um, to be able to use most VR. So classes take place in here? Yes, students... so we teach in here. Students can tr come in and reserve spaces and try things out, or faculty can reserve the whole space, which is what I did with my class this semester. So we did, for part of the semester, we were in here trying out different VR experiences and having uh, guest lecturers kind of join us on Zoom and demo their projects um, and talk about their research. And then at the end of the semester, we were in here every class period for students to work on their own projects, creating VR and AR um, applications for their final project. And then um, this, speaking of, you know, developing VR. <laughs> so, sorry, we're filming a little segment. Um, this is the development room where students can also book time on PCs to actually develop their own VR um, systems and so there isn't VR in here necessarily, but it has all of the software that they need. Dr. McGivney tells me about the rest of the equipment that they have in store and then we proceed to take a test ride in one of the VR sets she had set up specially for my visit. Okay, that's How good. is that? That's good. It looks good. That's I've good. been working wow. with a lot of little kids lately and it ends up like falling off their faces. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so yeah, so what you're seeing now is the pass-through mode. Okay. Um, and I should have actually, before I had you fit that to your face, I should have put you in the um, the menu, but I'm gonna give you the controllers. Okay. Oh. So you are going to get in the kayak and you're gonna go on an expedition. I almost don't wanna jump in and swim. No. <laughs> <laughs> I should not do that. You could try. I don't know if it'll let you. So I should get in there now? Oh, so okay. you can get into the kayak and then it's gonna ask you you can either like literally sit down on the floor. Or you can oh, stay oh wow! Okay, I'll, I'll stand for now. Uh, so sit on the floor. Don't, don't sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Then it's gonna reposition the scene so that it's. Oh you're still yeah, yeah, the kayak. yeah. And then. And then yeah, you can pick it up and you can. Oh, document. So there is a camera at the in front of you in the kayak. There's a camera. And oh. you can put down your paddles and take the camera and take photos if you want to. Wow. So this experience is putting you in the shoes of a National Geographic photographer right. or one of the Nat Geo explorers. Yeah. And in this issue of like accessibility, right? I mean, this is it, right? You can actually put people in other people's shoes. 
Yeah, like, that's so, what that's the the aim, you know. You tell us whether you actually feel that way, how effective it is. That's one of the biggest criticisms I think of this experience is that there isn't a lot more yes. to it. Oh, okay. People kind of want, you know, more modules or more um something you could keep coming back to, but they only made these two. Well, I mean, I'm assuming the developer space is growing, right? Yes, and this this stuff. application is like five years old. Yeah, so there's more now, right? Yes. Okay. Although we haven't seen, I haven't seen anything new from Nat Geo like this. There isn't necessarily um, as many new like educational applications. I think that's still. That's still worked on. Yeah. In the works. Yeah, in your yeah. in your report, you kind of talked a little bit about that. that yeah, the content still is still the content, limited. and also the evidence for its impact, right? Mm -hmm. like, what are people? What are the actual benefits, right? right. Entertainment, educational, or exactly. You know, so, so I so actually cool. used this specific Antarctica application uh, in uh -huh. my dissertation research. Oh, okay. Um, and I wasn't really looking at a specific learning outcome in terms of like content. That they learned. I was more interested in, you know, did it make the students feel more like they were learning in this context? Did they kind of understand the work of scientists who work in these environments better? Um, were they, you know, more interested or motivated? Um, and I think, you know, these types of things are very effective at that. But they yeah. had, they did have a hard time kind of remembering, like, you know, at one point they're going to tell you about a whale. They can remember like, the names of the whales. Because you will be distracted by by everything else. Yeah, there's like, <laughs> it's like a real life experience, you know, where it's a little bit harder than if you read it in a book. Um, but that's why this is a good, rich context. So what can we get from it? Yeah.